These are the darkest lost media icebergs on the internet, and today we are going to explore only the deepest layers of these icebergs. So let's dive in without wasting any more time. Mickey and Minnie Mouse a Sex Tape in 1936, shortly before Walt Disney's 35th birthday, his brother Roy encouraged Disney employees to hold a surprise birthday party for him, to which they agreed. Supposedly, two unknown animators decided that it would be funny if they were to animate a short of Mickey and Minnie Mouse having sex for the party. When the short was shown, Disney responded by feigning laughter before complimenting the quality of the animation and inquiring as to who had created it. Once the two animators came forward, he immediately fired them, then left the building. It has been claimed that he ordered the destruction of all known copies of the animation shortly thereafter. It is unknown if any copies of this short survived after this. The First Hardcore Erotic Game of the World this is a PC erotic game that was released in 1994. The game was developed by the German company CDP and published by CDV Software Entertainment. The game was advertised as the first hardcore erotic game in the world and was marketed with explicit imagery and language. The game's plot follows a young man named Machat who is tasked with fulfilling the sexual desires of various women in a fictional city. The gameplay involves interacting with the women and engaging in sexual activities. Despite its controversial content, the game gained a small following in Europe and was eventually banned in several countries due to its explicit nature. The game's original source code is now considered lost, making it impossible to be played or re-released. The Andrew Show, a show for white kids. The Andrew Show is a cable access program produced by the Ku Klux Klan and is known for featuring an eight-year-old host named Andrew who declares that the show is for all the white kids out there. The show is thought to have been produced in the 1990s or early 2000s. According to reports, the show featured segments on white pride, the importance of preserving white heritage, and other racist and white supremacist ideologies. The show also featured appearances by other members of the Ku Klux Klan and promoted the organization's beliefs and goals. It's unclear how many episodes of The Andrew Show were produced. However, the first episode of the show is still available to view. The Armin Mayo's Slash Burned Brandis Tapes these tapes are a series of recordings made by German computer technician Armin Mayos, who became known as the Rotenberg Cannibal after he killed and cannibalized a man named Bernd Brandes in 2001. Mayos had met Brandes through the internet, where the two had agreed to meet for the purpose of Brandes being killed and eaten by Mayos. Mayos documented the entire encounter, including the killing and dismemberment of Brandes on videotape. The tapes were used as evidence in Mayos' trial, where he was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. The tapes themselves have not been released to the public as they are considered too graphic and disturbing. However, transcripts of the tapes have been made available to the media and the public. The transcripts describe in detail the events leading up to and following the murder, including Mayo's conversations with Brandis and his own justifications for the killing. Him. This movie loosely references the life of Jesus Christ and contains homosexual pornographic content. The protagonist is a man who has an erotic obsession with Christ. The film gained mainstream attention in 1980 when it was featured in the book The Golden Turkey Awards and won the title of Most Unerotic Concept in Pornography. Several fragments related to the film have resurfaced, including a few advertisements and reviews from online newspaper archives. The movie was screened at various theaters across the United States. However, no footage of the movie has resurfaced in any form since then. The controversy surrounding him still persists to this day, and it remains a highly debated topic among film enthusiasts and critics. All My Baby's Mamas All My Baby's Mamas was a proposed reality television series that was set to air on the Oxygen Network in 2013. The show was set to follow the personal and professional lives of rapper Shadi Lowe, his 10 baby mamas, and his 11 children. The show was controversial from the start, with many critics and activists denouncing the show as exploitative and perpetuating negative stereotypes about African-American families. After widespread backlash, including online petitions and protests, Oxygen announced that it would not be airing the show. Despite the controversy, several trailers and clips from the show were leaked online, giving a glimpse into what the series would have been like if it had aired. However, no full episodes of the show have ever surfaced, and it remains a lost piece of television history. Bill Cosby, 77 Bill Cosby, 77 is a stand-up comedy film that was scheduled to be released on Netflix in November 2014. The title refers to Cosby's age at the time of filming. However, following numerous sexual assault allegations against Cosby, the release of the film 
was postponed by Netflix. Despite the controversy surrounding the comedian, the special was performed and filmed in July 2014 at the San Francisco Jazz Center. The film has not been officially released or leaked online, making it a piece of lost media. The Cure for Insomnia The Cure for Insomnia is an experimental film that holds the Guinness World Record for being the longest film ever created. The film features actor L.D. Groven reading a poem titled a Cure for Insomnia that is spliced with heavy metal music and pornography. The film's purpose was to cure insomniacs by reprogramming their biological clocks. It was shown at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago in 1987 and was never released in home video format. All copies of the film are believed to be lost. The current IMDb page for the film has two user reviews, one from 2002 and another from 2019. There is also an ongoing thread on the Cayman Design Forum dedicated to finding the film, with the most recent post from April 2019. Leslie Van Houten's Sexual Letter Relationship Leslie Van Houten was a member of the infamous Manson family, a cult led by Charles Manson responsible for a string of brutal murders in the late 1960s. In 2016, it was reported that Van Houten had been involved in a sexual letter relationship with a male murderer while in prison. The letters were reportedly written in the 1990s and early 2000s and contained explicit sexual content. The identity of the man was not revealed, but it was said that he was not a member of the Manson family. The letters were apparently discovered during an investigation into Van Houten's parole suitability in 2016. It is unclear if the letters still exist, or if they have been lost or destroyed. Babushka Lady Photos The Babushka Lady is the nickname given to an unknown woman who was present during the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in Dallas, Texas, on November 22, 1963. She gained her nickname due to the headscarf she was wearing, which resembled the traditional scarf worn by Russian grandmothers. There have been reports of a woman who may have taken photographs or film footage of the assassination. Several witnesses reported seeing a woman holding a camera, but her images have never been seen in public. The FBI and the Warren Commission investigated the possibility of the Babushka lady having recorded the assassination, but they were unable to locate her or her footage. Over the years, Many individuals have come forward claiming to be the Babushka lady, but none of these claims have been substantiated. The mystery surrounding her identity and any potential footage has only added to the intrigue and conspiracy theories surrounding the assassination of President Kennedy. Great Temptation The Great Temptation was a popular game show that aired on the 10 Network in Australia from 1970 to 1975. It was hosted by Australian television personality Tony Barber and was known for its high-stakes gameplay and glamorous prizes, including cars, boats, and luxury vacations. Unfortunately, an episode of The Great Temptation from 1972, which featured a particularly memorable contestant and some controversy surrounding the prize awarded, was lost due to an administrative error at the network. The episode was mistakenly erased and was not properly archived or recorded. Despite efforts to locate a copy of the episode, it remains missing and is considered a lost episode of Australian television history. In the field with EDP 445, it was the web series produced for the Golf Media app in 2015. The former was a parody of sports analysis programs focusing on the Philadelphia Eagles, while the latter followed EDP as he went to various locations and interacted with locals in a comedic way. The shows are not widely available online, with only a few partial clips surviving. Children of Loneliness Children of Loneliness is a lost American exploitation film from 1937. The film, directed by Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur, was a dramatization of the struggles of a group of young women who were forced into prostitution in Chicago. The film was controversial at the time of its release due to its frank depictions of prostitution and its portrayal of young women being forced into the sex trade. It was also criticized for its sensationalist tone and exploitative approach to the subject matter. Despite the controversy, the film was well received by critics and audiences, and it was successful at the box office. However, no known copies of the film are known to exist today. There are several theories as to why the film is lost. One possibility is that it was destroyed in a fire at the studios of RKO Radio Pictures, the film's distributor. Another theory is that the film was deliberately destroyed due to its controversial subject matter.
The Filthy Five. The Filthy Five is a lost sexploitation film that was produced in 1968. The plot of The Filthy Five revolves around five women who are hired by a wealthy businessman to carry out a series of sexual fantasies. The film features explicit scenes of nudity and sexual activity and was intended to capitalize on the growing popularity of exploitation films in the late 1960s. Despite the provocative subject matter, The Filthy Five failed to find an audience and was quickly forgotten. The film was never given a wide release, and it is unclear whether any copies of the original print still exist. The film's obscurity and lack of surviving copies make it unlikely that it will ever be rediscovered by audiences. Led Zeppelin and Vanilla Fudge's Shark Episode the Shark Episode is a lost sex video that allegedly features members of Led Zeppelin and Vanilla Fudge engaging in sexual activity with a group of groupies and a red snapper fish. The rumor goes that the incident occurred in 1969 after a concert at the Seattle Pop Festival. However, there is no concrete evidence that the Shark Episode ever actually took place. Led Zeppelin and Vanilla Fudge have both denied any involvement in the alleged incident, and there are no known witnesses or participants who have come forward to confirm the story. Nymphit Nymphit is the English title for the manga series Kodomo no Jikan, written and illustrated by Kaworu Watashiya. The manga centers on the relationship between a 23-year-old teacher and his 9-year-old student. It was serialized in the magazine Comic High from 2005 to 2013 and has been adapted into several light novels. The English translation of the manga was licensed by Seven Seas Entertainment in 2007, but after two volumes were released, the license was revoked due to controversy surrounding the series' content. The series was accused of promoting pedophilia and sexualizing children. As a result, Seven Seas Entertainment canceled the release of further volumes and pulled the two released volumes from distribution. The series has not been officially released in English since then, making it a lost printing of the manga. However, there have been fan translations of the manga available online, and the series has also been released in other languages, such as French, German, and Spanish. Baby Shaker Banned iOS Game Baby Shaker was a controversial iPhone app that was released in 2009 and subsequently banned from the App Store. The game encouraged users to quiet a crying baby on their screen by shaking their iPhone, causing a red X to appear over the baby's eyes. The game was met with widespread condemnation from child welfare advocates and was quickly pulled from the App Store by Apple. The Hanging of William Kerr the Hanging of William Kerr was an execution that took place on December 21, 1897. Kerr was convicted of the murder of an eight-year-old girl named Stella Williamson. The case was highly publicized at the time, and Kerr's execution was attended by a large crowd of people. It is said that the event was so popular that people came from far and wide to witness the execution. The Hanging of William Kerr was filmed which was a rarity for the time. However, the footage of the execution has since been lost, and it is unclear what happened to it. It is believed that the footage was shown publicly in some areas for years after the event, but no known copies exist today. Albert Fish Final Statement Albert Fish was a notorious American serial killer, cannibal, and rapist. He was known for the murders of nine-year-old Francis McDonald, four-year-old Billy Gaffney, and eight-year-old Grace Budd. Albert Fish wrote several pages of notes a few hours before his execution on January 16, 1936. These notes ultimately established his final statement, which his lawyer James Dempsey refused to release publicly. The contents of the notes have never been made public, and it is unclear what exactly Fish wrote in them. However, it has been reported that the notes were filled with disturbing and graphic descriptions of his crimes, and some speculate that they contained a full confession to additional murders. It is also possible that Fish wrote about his thoughts on his impending execution, or his views on religion and the afterlife. The Apprentice The Apprentice is a reality TV show created by Mark Burnett and hosted by former U.S. President Donald Trump from 2004 to 2015. The show featured contestants competing for a job with Trump's business organization and was a ratings hit for NBC. During the show's run, there were reportedly hundreds of hours of footage that didn't make it to air, including outtakes of Trump that were deemed too controversial or offensive. It has been alleged that Trump used racial slurs and made lewd comments about women on the set, but this has never been confirmed. A Daughter of the Gods A Daughter of the Gods is a lost silent fantasy drama film that was released in 1916. 
The film was notable for being one of the earliest and most expensive productions of its time, with a budget of over $1 million. It was also known for featuring Kellerman in various nude scenes, which caused controversy and censorship issues upon its release. Despite its initial success and critical acclaim, the film is now considered lost, with no known copies existing in any archives or collections. Its disappearance is attributed to a combination of factors, including inadequate preservation techniques and the film's controversial subject matter. Despite extensive efforts to locate the film, including a reward offered by Kellerman herself, it has yet to be rediscovered. The Hungry Duck The Hungry Duck is the name given to a collection of lost footage of strip performances that were recorded at a Russian bar between 1999 and 2013. The footage, which reportedly features both male and female performers, was shot on security cameras and later compiled into a video that circulated on the internet. The video gained notoriety for its graphic and explicit content, which included scenes of full nudity and sexual acts. The identity of the performers and the location of the bar have never been officially confirmed. Despite the video's popularity, the distribution of the footage is illegal and anyone caught sharing or possessing it can face criminal charges. Amy Lynn Bradley Cruz Pictures Amy Lynn Bradley was a 23-year-old American woman who went missing while on a cruise with her family in 1998. One of the most well-known pieces of evidence in her disappearance are the photos that were taken of her on the cruise, which show her posing in a bikini with a band playing in the background. These photos have been widely circulated in the media and online in the years since her disappearance. Some investigators and individuals believe that the photos may hold clues to Amy's disappearance or the circumstances leading up to it. However, despite extensive searches and investigations, Amy's fate remains unknown, and the photos have not yielded any definitive answers. Legends of the Hidden Temple Pit of Despair Incident Legends of the Hidden Temple is one of Nickelodeon's most beloved game shows. While the show ran for two years and produced over 120 episodes, there is one temple run that has become the stuff of legend. According to host Kirk Fogg, there was a temple run that was never aired due to a bizarre incident that occurred during filming. The incident in question involved a female contestant who was having a meltdown in the pit of despair. The cameras were rolling as she eventually vomited everywhere, causing production to stop recording so the area could be cleaned up. It is unclear which season, episode, or team the contestant was part of, and there is no information about why the incident occurred. However, given that the incident was not able to be used in the final broadcast, it is possible that the footage was confiscated or destroyed. Two Source Lost Media Two Source is a lost media item that is believed to have been a source document for the New Testament's Gospel of Matthew and Gospel of Luke. It is thought to have been a collection of sayings and teachings of Jesus, compiled in the form of a written document or documents. Scholars believe that the authors of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke used the tea source as a source for many of their shared passages, known as the double tradition. Despite its importance to biblical scholarship, the Q source has never been discovered. Scholars have been working for decades to piece together the text of the Q source through analysis of the shared passages in Matthew and Luke. This process has led to the creation of hypothetical reconstructions of the Q source, but no physical copy of the document has ever been found. The Commune the Commune is a lost film from 1970 that was inspired by the Manson family. The plot of the film centered around a group of hippies who form a commune in the California desert. The commune becomes increasingly violent and unstable, culminating in a brutal murder that mirrors the real-life Manson family murders that had taken place the previous year. The film was completed and screened in a few theaters but it received negative reviews and was quickly pulled from circulation. It is unclear whether any copies of the film still exist. There are a few reasons why the commune may have been lost. One possibility is that the negative reviews and lack of commercial success led to the film being neglected and eventually lost. Another possibility is that the film's controversial subject matter and violent content led to it being suppressed or destroyed. Trash Trash is a lost stop-motion animated pilot that was produced by Nickelodeon in 1990. The pilot was created by Vanessa Coffey, who was the vice president of animation at Nickelodeon at the time, and featured the work of noted animator and director Henry Selleck. The show was set in a world made entirely out of garbage and followed the adventures of a group of creatures who lived there. The show was never shown to anyone outside those involved in its production and the test audiences, and it remains as lost media to this day. Bulgasari 
Bulgasari is a lost South Korean monster film from 1962 directed by Kim yong kyu The film was inspired by the Japanese film Godzilla and features a giant monster rampaging through a city. The film was a box office success in South Korea, but its original negative was destroyed in a fire at the studio. As a result, the film is considered lost, and only a few still images and posters remain as evidence of its existence. Despite being lost, the film has achieved cult status among fans of monster movies, and there have been attempts to recreate it. World Peace War Ad This lost ad aired between 2008 and 2010 in Santa Barbara, California, with an anti-war theme. It was broadcasted late at night and featured an opera-type song in the background, with images and videos of figures like Gandhi and real-life events such as the Tainanmen protest. Despite efforts to find the ad, it has not surfaced online, and there are no mentions of it in any forums or related user media. Kansas City Blender Massacre Kansas City Blender Massacre is a 1986 short horror film directed and written by Todd Sheets, which revolves around a serial killer who uses a blender on his victims. Unfortunately, not much is known about this movie. While some of Todd Sheets' other directed films have resurfaced on a limited Blu-ray release. This movie and several others in his filmography have not been found. Sheets himself confirmed that Kansas City Blender Massacre is more or less lost. Cartipus Cartipus is a French children's TV series that aired in 1996. It was created and directed by Serge Elisolt, with music composed by Maxime Le Forestier. The series was produced by Folimage and broadcasted on the French television channel Canal+. Plus. The show followed the adventures of a young boy named Cartipus, who lived in a world made entirely of cardboard. He had a magical pencil that he used to draw objects that would come to life and help him on his adventures. The series was known for its distinctive animation style. Despite its popularity, the show has been considered lost media since its initial airing. There are no known recordings or copies of the show in existence, and it has not been released on any home video format. Attempts to locate the show by fans and collectors have been unsuccessful, and the reason for its disappearance is unknown. Pinguinho Vigente It was a Brazilian children's television program that aired in the 1970s. The show was produced by TV Cultura and was hosted by the actress and presenter Sonia Maria Dorse. The program featured educational content for children, including stories, songs, and games. Unfortunately, many episodes of Pinguinho de Genti are considered lost media, meaning they are no longer known to exist. This is due in part to the fact that TV Cultura did not have a systematic approach to archiving their programming at the time. Additionally, the tapes that were used to record the show were often reused for other purposes, which led to the loss of many episodes. Despite the lack of surviving episodes, Pinguinho de Gente remains a beloved and nostalgic memory for many Brazilians who grew up watching the show. Some clips and segments of the program have surfaced online, but the majority of the episodes are believed to be lost. Yolu Unreleased Songs Yanlu, also known as Vinicius Gajero Marques, was a Brazilian musician and songwriter who committed suicide at the age of 16 in 2006. Before his death, he recorded a number of songs, some of which were released on his posthumous album. However, there were also several unreleased songs that were reportedly found on his computer after his death. Some of the titles of these unreleased songs include Suicide is Painless and I Don't Feel Good. However, it is unclear if these songs will ever be officially released to the public or if they will remain as lost media. Five Starkle Men Five Starkle Men is an obscure Japanese music group from the 1990s that gained a cult following among fans of experimental and avant-garde music. The group consisted of five members who all wore unique and eccentric costumes during their performances, which were characterized by a blend of punk rock, noise music, and spoken word poetry. Despite their relative obscurity, Five Starkle Men have become a subject of fascination for some fans of lost media, as many of their early recordings and performances have been lost or destroyed over time. Some people have even speculated that there may be unreleased material or lost recordings of their live shows that have yet to be discovered. Nikola Tesla's Files after Nikola Tesla's death in 1943, his personal papers and scientific documents were seized by the U.S. government on the grounds of national security. The papers were stored in various government facilities, including the Alien Property Custodian's Office, until they were released to the Tesla Museum in Serbia 
in the 1950s. While it is generally believed that the vast majority of Tesla's files were recovered and are now publicly accessible, there is some speculation that certain documents may still be missing or withheld by the U.S. government. In particular, some researchers have claimed that Tesla's work on particle beam weapons and other military technologies may have been classified or destroyed by the government. Toy Story 2 Ultimate Toy Box Manufacturing Error It refers to a mistake that occurred during the production of a special edition DVD set of the movie Toy Story that was sold exclusively at Costco stores in the early 2000s. The error resulted in some copies of the DVD set, including a draft version of the movie that contained unfinished animation and other incomplete elements. The mistake was caused by a miscommunication between Pixar Animation Studios and the DVD production company, resulting in the wrong version of the film being included on some copies of the DVD set. The mistake was discovered after the DVDs had already been shipped to Costco stores and sold to customers. Upon learning of the error, Pixar Animation Studios and Disney issued a statement apologizing to customers and offering to replace any defective DVDs. The defective copies of the DVD set have since become a collector's item among some fans of the movie and the Pixar Animation Studios franchise. Yum Nikki It is a popular Japanese indie game that was first released in 2004. The game follows a girl named Maratsuki, who explores her own surreal dreamscape, collecting effects, and encountering a variety of strange creatures and locations. There are a few known demo versions of Yum Nikki that were released prior to the final version of the game. These demos are notable for containing content that was either changed or removed entirely from the final version of the game. Some fans have expressed interest in locating these demo versions for the purpose of studying the game's development and understanding its creative process. While they themselves are not necessarily lost media, they are certainly rare and difficult to come by. Some fans have managed to obtain copies of the demos through various means, but there is no official or widely available release of these versions of the game. Yukiko Okada Lost Radio Broadcast Yukiko Okada was a Japanese pop idol and actress in the 1980s. She became one of the most successful idols of her time, with numerous hit singles and albums, and a large following of fans. She did a radio broadcast in 1986 for a program called Onyanko Club No Happy Rajo. The show was a popular radio program in Japan and featured interviews and performances by various pop idols. She performed several of her hit songs on the program. The broadcast was recorded, but the original tapes have since been lost or destroyed, and the broadcast has not been rebroadcasted or officially released. The Capricorns Are Gonna Get You The Capricorns were a British band active in the early 2000s that blended elements of punk rock, indie rock, and new wave into their music. Their album, Go the Distance, was released in 2001 to critical acclaim. However, their second album, the Capricorns Are Gonna Get You, which was set to be released in 2003, was never officially released and is considered lost media. According to some reports, the album was slated for release on Memphis Industries, but the label pulled it due to concerns of the album's content. The Capricorns reportedly refused to change the album's controversial lyrics and artwork, resulting in the album being shelved. Pokoya World Pokoya World was an online game based on the popular children's television show Pokoyo. The game was launched in 2009 and was aimed at children between the ages of 3 and 6. The game was developed by Zinkia Entertainment and was available to play on the Pokoya World website. The game allowed players to create their own avatars and explore various areas of the Pokoya World. Players could play games, solve puzzles, and interact with other players from around the world. The game was available in multiple languages, including English, Spanish, French, and German. However, Pokoya World was shut down in 2018, and the website is no longer accessible. It is unclear why the game was shut down, but it is possible that it was due to the game's declining popularity and the cost of maintaining the servers. Since the game was an online-only game, it is now considered lost media and cannot be played or accessed anymore. The Core The Core is a partially lost Atari 2600 game developed by Videosoft, incorporated, and published by Playaround, in 1999 to 2001. The game was never officially released, but a prototype cartridge was discovered and dumped by a collector in 2006. The gameplay involves controlling a spacecraft and shooting down enemy ships 
while avoiding obstacles. The game was intended to be released with adult content, including nudity, but it is unclear how much of this content was actually implemented in the prototype. The game is notable for its rarity and controversial subject matter, and is sought after by collectors of Atari 2600 games. Habbo Hotel Habbo Hotel was a popular social network service for teenagers that was launched in 2000. The service allowed users to create their own avatars and interact with each other in a virtual world. The popularity of the service led to the creation of several mobile games based on Habbo Hotel. One of the mobile games was called Habbo Islands, which was released for Nokia phones in 2005. The game allowed players to create their own islands and interact with other players. However, the game was only available for a short period of time before it was discontinued and removed from Nokia's App Store. Another mobile game based on Habbo Hotel was called Habbo Adventure, which was released in 2007. The game was a role-playing game that allowed players to explore a virtual world and complete quests, similar to Habbo Islands. The game was only available for a short period of time. Press Your Luck British Adaptation There have been several adaptations of the game show Press Your Luck outside of the United States, including in the United Kingdom. The British adaptation of Press Your Luck was called Whammy. The all-new Press Your Luck and was produced by Grundy Television for the ITV network. The show was hosted by Tim Davies and ran for one series of 14 episodes from 2002 to 2003. As far as the availability of this adaptation is concerned, it is not currently known if any episodes exist in full or if any clips or recordings have surfaced online. It is possible that some episodes may exist in private collections or archives. Before the Dawn before the Dawn is a series of concerts performed by British singer-songwriter Kate Bush in 2014. The concerts were her first live performances in 35 years and were held at the Hammersmith Apollo in London. The concerts were highly anticipated and tickets sold out in a matter of minutes. They were received positively by both fans and critics, with many noting Bush's strong vocals and theatrical performance. Despite this, no official release of the full concert footage has been made available to the public. Some fan-recorded footage of the concerts can be found online, but the quality varies and the recordings are often incomplete. Additionally, a live album, titled Before the Dawn, was released in 2016, but it features only highlights from the concerts rather than the full performance. Food Fight Video Game Build Food Fight is an animated movie that was released in 2012 after several years of production issues. The film's plot revolves around a supermarket that comes to life after the store closes for the night. The movie features a cast of animated food characters and has been widely criticized for its poor animation quality and overall lack of quality. There was a video game adaptation of Food Fight, which was in development and was supposed to be released around the same time as the movie. However, the game was never officially released and is considered lost media. The game was being developed by American Studio N Space for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Rick and Morty, the New Jared Commercials The New Jared was a series of three commercials produced by the team behind the animated TV show Rick and Morty to promote the sandwich chain Subway. The commercials featured Jared Fogel, the former Subway spokesperson who has since been convicted of charges related to child porn and sex crimes. The commercials were controversial and were pulled from the airwaves shortly after their release following Fogel's arrest and conviction. It is not clear if any copies of the commercials still exist. Untitled Earthbound Sequel An untitled sequel to the cult classic role-playing game Earthbound, known as Mother 2 in Japan, was announced in 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube console. The game was being developed by Japanese video game company Brownie Brown in collaboration with series creator Shigesato Itoi's company. The sequel was set to take place in a different world with new characters, but would still feature elements from the Earthbound series, such as a modern setting and quirky humor. The game was never officially titled and is commonly referred to as Mother 3 by fans due to its status as the third game in the series. Despite several years of development, the game was never completed and was eventually canceled. However, some production materials from the game have since been released, including concept art, music tracks, and storyboards. A fan translation of the game was also released in 2008, allowing English-speaking fans to experience the game's story and gameplay. Sleepless Sleepless was a late-night German television program that aired on ProSieben from 1996 to 1998. The show featured music videos, 
interviews, and live performances by various bands and musicians, as well as segments on pop culture and social issues. Although much of the content from Sleepless is widely available on the internet, some segments and episodes are considered partially lost or difficult to find. This includes interviews with specific bands and musicians, such as a 1998 interview with Rob Zombie, as well as some episodes of the show. Advent of Ascension Advent of Ascension is a Minecraft mod that was first released in 2014. The mod adds many new features to the game, including new weapons, enemies, and dimensions. Over the years, several versions of the mod have been released, with some of them being partially lost. One of the lost versions is version 1.7.10, which was released in 2015. This version included several new dimensions, items, and enemies, but the download link for it is no longer available. However, some players have managed to preserve the files for this version, so it is possible to find them on some Minecraft modding websites. Another partially lost version of the mod is version 3.33, which was released in 2019. This version added several new features, including new bosses and dimensions, but the download link for it was removed from the mod's official website. Cutie the Kitten Quiet Tomato is a YouTuber with well over 100,000 subscribers known for his Flash animations. In 2017, he planned to create Cutie the Kitten, a third-person 3D game featuring the protagonist Cutie the Kitten and other YouTubers, with gameplay similar to Doom and full cutscenes and boss battles. However, the game was cancelled and only three levels out of 40 were finished. Only three screenshots from the alpha version have surfaced, and the real title of the game is unknown. If you haven't seen the video about the bottom layers of the darkest icebergs on the internet, you can watch it here. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and I will see you in the next one.